OK, and welcome to this uh, tutorial, which I hope will be short and useful. Uh, this is our opening 3D coach screen. Uh, we're going to be starting with per pixel painting and click on this folder, which will give us a dialogue to import an object. Uh, and I'm going to import G4 because uh, I've got a set up and ready. Uh, and we're just going to create a little pair of shorts for her. So on our subdivision, it should be no subdivision, keep UVs, no smoothing. Uh, I'm largely uninterested in this because I'm not going to create any texture maps at the moment. So when you're ready, click on OK. And she will shortly import into the scene. So just a quick note on the interface. Uh, you'll notice I've got some artefacts here. Uh, I believe that's because this is the second time I've done this tonight. And it seems the more I do it, uh, the more artifacts I get. They're not a problem, they just look like uh, dodgy normals there for a moment. They're not going to affect our modelling, uh, so I'm not going to fret too much. So a note about navigation. Uh, you can use these tools up here to do your spinning and your panning and your zooming. Uh, but it's a bit better on the mouse. If you click on a, an area that's not covered in a mesh, left click move the mouse, you get a rotate. That's great. If you use the centre mouse button, which is usually a roller wheel, uh, you get pan. And if you use your right button, you get zoom. Just saves you using these up here. Uh, these three here are down for your lighting. This is your overall ambient uh, light. This is your main light. Uh, and that's the direction. I kind of set it up neutral because I like to be able to see what I'm doing. OK, so let's get to it. I'm uh, going to get front from the camera menu. Uh, just one more thing on uh, this interface to start with. You'll notice if I pan here, uh, we're in a perspective mode at the moment, because we can see the side of her body as we're moving. Uh, it's sometimes useful to use orthographic. Uh, this is the toggle key, uh, and that will give us a straight on uh, mode. Uh, you see that when we move her, she doesn't uh, get the view around the side. Uh, but generally I use this one, uh, it's just sometimes it's useful for the other one. Anyway, here we go, let's get on to do some modelling. So I'm going to zoom in and go down to this area down here. Get myself, whoops, roughly straight on. Now to start with, uh, we don't need to be in this room, this is the paint room. We need to be in the retopo room, so I'm going to go in there. We've lost our palettes over here because we don't need them. Uh, we have a model and our tools on this side. So the crate, you know, as you probably imagine, is creating um, geometry. Uh, tweak lets us move around our points and cur um, edges and such like. And UVs help us create the UV map. These commands here are specific to the tool you've selected. They're generally the same, it's these ones, except for UVs, uh, they have their own set, and I believe cap, no not cap, which one is it, strokes, which has its, uh, its own down here, and we're going to start with strokes, because what I want to do is just create the bottom of the shorts here, now strokes either lets you draw on the mesh, like this, uh, or if you start off the mesh, it will draw a straight line for you. So I want to draw a straight line there and there to get myself a basis for my shorts. And if I rotate round, you'll see that's gone all the way around. And then we're going to use the strokes tool just to divide that in two at the front. Now up here you'll see it says how many segments it's going to make. Uh, it's got 12. Um, and if we press enter now with the return key, it will fill those in. So that's a good start for us, uh, very handy, real quick, and, you know, not too bad. Uh, I might actually just move some of these a little bit, because uh, I want them to roughly be the same width all the way around. Use move vertices for that one. Okay. So you can either kind of start at one end and keep moving up, uh, but in this uh, program, unlike most others, 
Uh, I kind of like to start at the bottom and then the top and then work my way down. Uh, so for the next stage I'm going to use the points and faces. And for points and faces it's very simple. Left click to create a point and just build those around your uh, mesh. Uh, doing a better job of, than I am of keeping them uh, roughly same width apart. And when you've got all the way around, as we will do in a second, uh, if you point in the middle of the one, you'll get a bounding box, as you can see. If you point more towards a corner, you'll get a triangle. Uh, and that's because uh, it understands that there's a triangle there. And if I right click on that one, it will create me a triangle. Uh, I don't want a triangle, I want a quad, so I'm going to point in the middle of each of these all the way around until I've got my loop. Pretty quick, pretty easy. And because every point you click adheres to the face, it's almost exactly where we want it. Now because I've made a hash of uh, keeping all those of roughly the same height, I'm just going to do some adjusting here just to make them a little bit consistent. You don't have to be too uh, precise about it. Uh, one of the tools we'll use later on uh, will help us with that. But I'd like to get it roughly right to start with. Now, as I'm sure you realise, uh, we want to add these two together now. Uh, and it looks like I've created more up here than I have down here. That's not a problem too much. Uh, all I'm going to do is use my strokes tool to go from there to there and from there to there. And then draw across where I want it and press enter and it will create me some geometry. Now this one here obviously can't decide which of these I'm going to go to so I'm going to add a uh, split in there and that's easy enough. Uh, I'm going to use the split rings to create a vertical one there. Now you'll see the split rings, if you go towards the edge you usually get a horizontal and if you go towards the middle you'll get a vertical. So that's that one added there. Then I'm going to use my strokes tool again. You'll see that's yellow on that dot now. I'm going to dra drag it down until I get to that one and then do the same across now you could do this for more at a time, you know, you don't have to do it one strip at a time. You can do it as many as you like. I'm just trying to be a bit slow uh, so that I kind of demonstrate it. Just move these so they're uh, somewhat uh, neater. I've got uh, roughly a triangle going across those ones which will help uh, adhere to uh, where we are. And I'm just going to add some more splits over here to keep me going. Uh, where are we? Strokes. And I'm going to create one down there. Oops, one up there. And you'll see these are all a bit skewed and nasty. Uh, that's not too bad. You'll see there's points on these things that you can drag around to move the uh, spline to more where you want it to be. Just makes life a bit handier. And because that kind of goes a bit tapery down there, I'm going to move those edges uh, such that I've got the better correlation with the top. Uh, let's back to strokes again. See that's preserved that for me, which is very nice of it. I'm just going to draw across these ones. Now you'll notice I'm leaving this channel clear, there's a reason for that, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And actually uh, I've managed to detach these lines so I'm just going to join them up again. Move that about and press enter. So that strip there is uh, is bare. If you use points and faces, point in there, you'll get your blue bounding boxes and you'll just be able to click and uh, add. That's right click if I uh, didn't mention that earlier. Let's neat those up a bit, lovely. 